This is our presentation on deaf culture in America, focusing on art forms. Today, this presentation will be brought to you by Erica, Anna, Dahlia, Aunt Anna, Helen, Jacqueline, Kendall, Harper, and Melanie. When you think of deaf culture, what comes to your mind? For many, the first thing and the only thing that comes to mind is American Sign Language and assistive technologies such as cochlear implants and hearing aids. But deaf culture has so many more elements suppressed by hearing ideologies causing a lack in representation of the community. In this presentation, we are going to explore art in deaf culture. To create a picture in your head of the chronological order, we will start by discussing the history, followed by paintings, mixed media, created by people who are deaf, followed by films starring people who are deaf and or the culture, then discussing the functionality of musical and the theatrical performances. We will continue by introdu introducing an action plan to increase the support of deaf art in America. So this is the history of deaf art, uh, the early years to the 1970s. Um, the noted deaf artists of the 18th century were Francisco de Goya, 1746 to 1828, and William Mercer, 1765 to 1839, and he was the first known American deaf artist. Uh, 1913, the Bangville Police, directed by W.C. Fields, um, was deaf. Late 1960s, Gallaudet University students formed the deaf art movement. 1967, National Theater of the Deaf was founded by deaf director David Hayes. 1972, the first known exhibit of works entirely done by uh, about the deaf experience was by Dr. Betty Miller's first show, The Silent World at Gallaudet. Uh, she painted or did the work for Amazon Prohibited, and it showed the abusive truth about autism and oralism, which is shown above. Okay, next slide. Early years uh, to the 19th, or the, oop, did I, oh, I messed that up. Okay, 1980s. The 1985 to 1995, Deaf Artists of America ran numerous exhibits of works by art, of art by Deaf artists, and published a newsletter to connect and promote Deaf artists around the country. Um, there was a gallery space that was available from 1988 to 1992. The DAA hosted a conference at the National Institute for the Deaf in Rochester, New York, and there was a discussion about art specifically about the deaf experience. And then in um, 1989, there was a Deaf Way Festival. It was a four-day workshop or a think tank called at Gallaudet, where nine deaf artists gathered and coined the term Devia, which is also deaf view uh, slash image art, created the manifesto and a mural that is also shown. Okay. And then 1990 to 2000, 1993, Devia exhibit was in North Essex College in Haverville, Massachusetts. Uh, the Devia exhibit and Deaf Studies 4 conference was in Woburn, Massachusetts. Uh, 1998, International Archives of Deaf Artists, with the website opens, and it's available to the public. Devia exhibit and Deaf Studies conference in Oakland, California. And then in 1990 to 2000, the Elements of a Culture, Visions by Deaf Artists, it was a touring exhibit that opened. And then the last slide is the 2000s to the current. 2002, Deaf Artists in America, the Colonial to Contemporary by Deborah Sonnenstrahl is published. Uh, July 18th or 8th through the 13th, 2002, Deaf Way in, or Deaf Way 2 in Washington, D.C., was a deaf artist panel where they could discuss the political climate of the area. 2005 Rochester Institute of Technology's Deaf Artists is available to the public and that's their website. 2009, wave two of Devia emerges, emerges. 2012, Artivism was founded to discuss the political climate. 2014, 2014 was the 25th anniversary of Devia. 2014 is a D-Artivist United was founded. In the current, many festivals, conferences, and exhibits have taken place within the past two decades, allowing deaf artists to connect and develop their art. In 1972, Betty Miller showcased her art expressing the experiences of deaf individuals at Gallaudet University. The title of this exhibit was The Silent World, and it was the first show of its kind only showcasing art expressing the deaf experience. In 1989, the term DVA was coined. This stands for Deaf View Image Art. 
Divya is not used to describe deaf artists, but art that expresses the deaf experience. This slide showcases two famous deaf artists. Chuck Bard was born on February 22, 1947, and tragically passed from cancer on February 10, 2012. He was a painter, mixed media artist, and actor. He attended Kansas School for the Deaf, Gallaudet University, and National Technical Institute for Deaf at Rochester Institute of Technology. He was also the curator of Deaf Way 2. Betty G. Miller was a painter and mixed media artist. She was an art professor at Gallaudet University for 18 years and co-founder of Spectrum, Focus on Deaf Artists. Her father was also a deaf artist named Ralph R. Miller Sr. Both of these artists were influential in, in Divya art from its beginnings. Deaf representation in movies, films, and television. Authentic deaf representation in films and television that depict deaf characters' roles played by deaf actors is a positive step forward for the film and television industry. Normalizing deafness in mainstream films and, films and television and portraying all facets of a deaf individual and how they communicate spreads awareness. It is essential for directors to not mischaracterize deaf culture and to cast deaf actors in these roles. While not all portrayals have been perfect, and there can be many criticisms to the roles of deaf characters that have been played, the conversation is a step in the right direction. And here I have a picture of Marley Matlin. She was the first deaf actress to win an Academy Award for the film Children of a Lesser God in 1987. And here we have a few films um, that show deaf rep representation. So Coda, which was in 2021, Marley Matlin, she was one of the main characters. She is a deaf actress that lost all of the hearing in her right ear and 80% of the hearing in her left ear at 18 months of age due to illness and fevers. In this film, she plays the role of Jackie Rossi. Troy Kotzer, he's a deaf actor and for this film, he won Best Supporting Actor. Daniel Durant was also in this film. He's a deaf actor born to deaf parents and he plays the role of Leo Rossi. The film A Quiet Place, um, there's A Quiet Place 1 and A Quiet Place 2, 2018 and 2020. Millicent Simmons, who's pictured on the top right, she's a deaf actress that starred in both of those films. She lost her hearing before the age of one due to a medication overdose. She plays Reagan in the films. And here we have two more films, The Silent Child, pictured on the bottom right. This film brings awareness to the need for British Sign Language in schools. Maisie Sly plays Libby in the film, a four-year-old profoundly deaf child. Maisie was born profoundly deaf. And on the top left, we have Eternals 2021. Lauren Rid Ridoff played Makari, and this is Marvel's first deaf superhero in this film. For television, we have The Bachelor, Abigail Herringer. She was the first deaf contestant to appear on the show. She wears cochlear implants and it was important for her to tell her story to show a different experience of being deaf to viewers. This uh, television show on the right, This Close, it's a television series about two deaf best friends navigating Los Angeles in their 20s. 25% of the cast and crew are deaf, as well as the two main characters played by Shoshana Stern and Josh Feldman. And finally, we have El Defo, a series about a girl that loses her hearing and wears a hearing aid. In the show, the sound mimics what would be heard or not heard when deaf or with hearing aids. And a reality show on Netflix called Deaf You, it follows a group of students at Gallaudet University. Deaf musicians. Mandy Harvey is an American jazz and pop singer. Mandy has been a sensation in the music world after her audition in America's Got Talent, where she performed original songs and was given the golden buzzer. She became profoundly deaf after an illness called connective tissue disease, also known as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. She sings, composes music, and plays the ukulele. Ludwig van Beethoven is another deaf musician that has lived on through the classical music he composed. Beethoven was a German composer and pianist. His work is now amongst the most performed in the world of classical music. Beethoven began to grow increasingly deaf due to the compression of his eighth cranial nerve during 1812 and 1827. 
Everlyn Glennie is a Scottish percussionist who has won many awards worldwide for her talent in the world of music. She became profoundly deaf at, at the age of 12, but this did not stop her from performing and chasing her dreams. Everlyn is known for performing barefoot to feel the music through vibrations. Glennie performed at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in London 2012 and still performs today. Warren Snipe is a deaf writer, rapper, actor, and performer. Warren Snipe graduated from Gallaudet University in 1994. Warren performed the national anthem at the Super Bowl in 2021. Warren has worked with the National Deaf Dance Company and has completed an album called Deaf, So What? He is active in the deaf community, pushing others to chase their dreams and believe that they are capable of achieving anything they desire. The National Theater of the Deaf is the oldest theater company that combines productions using both ASL and spoken language. The company was founded in 1967 by Edna S. Levine and her co-founder was Bernard Brog, uh, who was considered America's first deaf professional performer. NTD has been seen in all 50 states in the US and around the world. NTD has appeared and performed on Broadway, the Disney Channel, on Sesame Street, and at the White House. And they have produced over 6,000 theater productions. The New York Deaf Theater is a nonprofit professional theater company, and it's the longest running company of its kind in the greater New York City area, and the third oldest deaf theater company in America. There are multiple deaf theater companies around the country, but the most well-known are the National Theater of the Deaf, Deaf West Theater, and New York Deaf Theater. They all employ professional deaf actors, playwrights, and production crews. The goal uh, of these theater companies is to push the artistic boundaries while focusing on combining both the deaf and hearing world. Many theater companies have worked to raise awareness of the deaf world, educating hearing audience of ASL and deaf culture. Um, Gallaudet University has the world's only accredited liberal arts major for deaf and hard of hearing. Gallaudet Theater gives its students unique opportunities to work, perform, and team with others like themselves, sharing a common common identity and language free of barriers. It helps them to discover their natural skills and talents within a theater context. Next slide. Uh, musicals or plays will sometimes have an ASL interpreter on the side of the stage, but this formula makes uh, the deaf or hard of hearing person having to look at the interpreter, not at the actors on stage. In 2022, the Olney Theater Center for the Arts did a production of The Music Man on their main stage in the format of the songs were performed in English with ASL and English subtitles, and the dialogue was performed in ASL with English subtitles. Deaf West Theater have put on several deaf musicals and have become extremely popular with their revival of Spring Awakening. They use a method some call shadowing by having two actors play one role, one deaf person as the main character and the other a hearing person as the voice. The revival of Spring Awakening had a limited run on Broadway and was able to perform at the 2016 Tony Awards, which was a first for Deaf West Theater. Deaf West Theater most acclaimed performances so far are the musical Big River and Spring Awakening. Deaf Theater is a unique art form that continues to achieve great successes. Deaf artists will continue uh, to be successful in the future and this art form can become very prevalent in both hearing and deaf cultures. There are many ways to support deaf art. For instance, there are some deaf arts festivals in existence, such as an annual festival held in St. Louis, but it is important to expand these festivals to promote deaf art and ensure the proceeds benefit the artists. It is also important to encourage deaf artists and organizations to complete grant requests from organizations such as the National Endowment for the Arts, which help fund art initiatives. 
Current international deaf art collectives should also be extended to include artists from other less represented countries. For instance, the International Sign Project by Deaf Arts International currently only consists of European countries, but could be expanded to other nations. Additionally, it is crucial to actively hire deaf artists. For instance, many universities have an, have an artist in residence program, and it is essential to make these accessible and actively recruit deaf artists for these opportunities. It is also important to create fellowships and writers groups for playwrights, poets, and other creatives so that deaf artists can be, can be supported in their work. Providing close or open, open captioning and translating existing theatrical works into ASL is also a crucial element to make sure that the arts are accessible to everyone. And finally, we should also support the arts and deaf education so that we can cultivate another generation of deaf artists. So nationwide, there are a variety of deaf festivals put together by schools, community centers, museums, and other organizations. The Nelson Atkins Museum, um, located in Kansas City, Missouri, is an example of one of these that hosts an annual deaf festival aimed to celebrate and unite deaf art and artists. So some of the events that are included are ASL slam poetry performances, flipbook activities, and storytellers. One unique thing about their festival is that they are a virtual event, which allows for a more diverse group of participants to present and enjoy the art. While this virtual aspect is a great way for inclusion, there are some methods we suggest that can help make this festival reach a wider audience. So virtual events have the opportunity to be global if they provide um, closed captionings and in multiple languages to allow for different presenters and different backgrounds to be able to enjoy the art and understand it as well. So these captions are not presented in the Nelson Atkins Deaf Festival Museum, but it can be um, implemented in their future festivals, as well as it could be something that other festivals can include in order to make their event a more global one. Deaf individuals have always created art, but it was not formally showcased until the early 1970s with Gallaudet University's art exhibition called The Silent World. Since then, there has been a profound increase in the number of artistic experiences, including exhibits, performances, and conferences. Visual art, particularly Davia, expresses the deaf experience with the use of distinct colors or hand and eye imagery that reflects the artist's visual perspective. The representation of deaf artists in film and television is also growing with a push to cast deaf actors and feature stories about the deaf community. Many theatric, deaf theatrical and musical performances are highly acclaimed and widely distributed. And like deaf theater, music produced and performed by deaf individuals has a far reaching audience and demonstrates that the arts can be experienced and enjoyed by anyone. Ultimately, deaf art is vibrant and reflects a long history of creative expression. It is imperative to support deaf artists by offering opportunities for them to showcase and produce their art. More initiatives such as art festivals or art fellowships need to be created, need to be created, need to be accessible and should be used to fund and promote deaf art. Thank you for viewing this presentation on deaf art. Here we have our references for the presentation.